It's time for a Q&A episode here on OTRS Central. Remember, if you want questions answered, you either go to Twitter, uh, tweet your questions to add OTRS Central using the hashtag OTRS Central, or on Fridays, you submit your questions to the OTRS Central Facebook page, and it'll be the Facebook Friday Q&A. So let's get started with this Twitter Q&A. Let's see what we've got. Blue Goblin 01 kicks us off with, what do you say to the fans who say Cena's booked exactly like Hogan, Savage, and Warrior were? Shut up. Shut up. Shut your filthy mouth holes. I don't think Cena was booked anywhere like a warrior or a savage. I could see some of the comparisons to Hogan in terms of the type of booking. Some of them. But Hogan drew money and a lot more of it. It's a big difference. Different time, too. The fact that Cena's been booked the way he has been for so long is ridiculous. It's not a statement to Cena's greatness. Greatness is more of a statement of the WWE stupidity. Uh, PJTW Central, that's PJ Talk Wrestling. Why don't you do a podcast unless you do already that I don't know about? I was doing it uh, a couple of months ago on Blog Talk Radio, and I hate Blog Talk Radio, so I stopped doing it for the time being. I I'm sure the podcast will come back at some point in time. Part of the other problem is, too, I, I don't watch anything other than Raw on the WWE pay-per-views. I mean, I don't watch TNA. I don't watch SmackDown. I don't watch NXT. I don't watch ROH. I don't watch any other indies. I don't watch New Japan. So it's kind of limited in terms of what I could talk about on a podcast. Honestly, if I were to do a podcast at this point in time, and this might end up happening, it would be a sports-themed Q&A with some wrestling talk mixed in more so than a wrestling-based podcast, if I had to be honest. That would probably be the direction I would go at this particular point in time until I got, you know, maybe a little more interested in professional wrestling again. Just saying. Sandberg 1, have you ever noticed that John Cena looks like Crash Bandicoot? Maybe a little. <laughs> maybe a little. Uh, let's hear Martin Hall 05, do you think the Hall of Fame will have to be less frequent in the future as they are running out of worthy candidates. No, they've got so many names from the past that they still haven't inducted. It would be years before they ran out of truly quality, qualified candidates. So I don't see where they would need to shake anything up or change anything anytime soon. Uh, let's see here. Seeky for life. Do you find it stupid that Rollins gets no hate, but Reigns does when Rollins is the one getting the stronger push? I think that's a fair point. I really do. If anything, Rollins is the one being really pushed. Rollins is the one that's being forced, if anything. I mean, I could go into the whole semantics of why I would believe that to be the case, but you do bring up an interesting question. Why is Reigns getting so much hate when it's actually Rollins that is getting the better, stronger, more consistent push? You know, it's Rollins that is facing off against Lesnar and Cena at the pay-per-view Royal Rumble. Reigns is sitting there feuding with the Big Show. Like a lot of the hate on Reigns in particular comes from the fact that people don't think he's ready and they also view him as a threat to Daniel Bryan winning the Royal Rumble, where Seth Rollins is on his own different thing and not interfering with Daniel Bryan in the Royal Rumble. So that, if I had to guess, that's what I would say. Uh, Corey underscore Warboyus, do you think Marcus Mariota could be an RG3 2.0? Uh, no, from the standpoint of I think Marcus Mariota has a better head on his shoulders. No, from the standpoint of he's much bigger than RG3 therefore making him less susceptible to injury. And frankly, I think Mariota has more overall upside than RG3 did coming out of Baylor a few years ago. And so I don't think Mariota is an RG3 2.0. I understand why some people might think that, especially because of the systems that both played in at college, but I think that's where the comparisons kind of need to stop between those two. Uh, let me see what else we've got here. Uh, let's see here. Who do we got next? Is that... Rockin' RJ 1987, it is indeed. I've heard you say most of the WWE locker room is not ready to step up. How do you know unless you give them the chance? That is a great question, isn't it? And in theory, you don't know until you give them the chance. However, I will also throw in there, uh, Mr. Rockin' RJ 1987, that based off of the way that guys have been booked, based off of the, guys, the way, been, way guys have been featured, 
How could anybody possibly be ready? And in today's WWE toxic wasteland of creative environment, how could anybody be ready even if they were given a chance because the WWE would just find a way for them to screw it up? Jamie and SNZ, would the best thing for Daniel Bryan be for a new feud to be set up by a heel eliminating him from the Rumble? If so, who? That is a great question for Daniel Bryan. Uh, Mr. President of the New Zealand faction of the OTR Central Fan Club, because I don't know if you have a great WrestleMania match for Daniel Bryan lined up at this particular moment. Now, I know, of course, many will sit there and comment with the flaming keyboard figures fire, talk about how Daniel Bryan versus Brock Lesnar would be one of the best things ever, or Daniel Bryan versus Seth Rollins would be so many levels of ROH awesome that it would have to be main event at WrestleMania 31. Um, with that said, though, I just don't really know where the match is for Daniel Bryan at this point in time. I really don't. I'm almost wishing in a way that they would have saved him for coming back at the night after WrestleMania 31 than before the Royal Rumble. I understand why they brought him back when they did, and maybe it was time on the one hand to bring him back when they did. Uh, but I, I just don't know. Uh, a heel eliminating him. You know, it, I just don't know. I'm just one of those things I really don't know. Uh, the Owens, what made you love black women? What was the beginning stages? I'm mixing in brown sugar myself. Oh, good for you. I'm glad to hear it. Um, and Ms., you need any further assistance? Uh, ho holler at the Schleich Daddy. He'll let you know what's up. Um, when, what made me start loving black women? Um, the real question should be what made them start loving me? <laughs> uh, beginning stages. Mm -hmm. Probably Rudy Huxtable, <laughs> Cosby Show, Lisa Turtle from Saved by the Bell going in the Wayback Machine. That would have been the beginning stages of it. And then it just progressed from there. Uh, let's see here. What else we got next? Uh, Junie underscore 86. What kind of effect, if any, will Tough Enough have on WWE NXT? I don't think it'll have any. I really don't. I don't see where it would. Kind of a different type of thing. And frankly, the Tough Enough winner would just end up going to NXT any damn way. So, I mean, I don't see where it would really have any impact, honestly. Big Dog 0910. Who else would you like to see in the WWE Hall of Fame this year? Um, I've seen them talk about Ray the Crippler Stevens, and I think that's appropriate especially since they're going to be doing it in Santa Clara in the San Francisco area. Uh, in terms of other individuals that they might put in there, I always love to see Owen Hart get his time in the sun. I just don't know that that's going to happen this year. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? I mean, you could do Sting. I just don't know if this would be the right moment to do Sting. Um, you could always do the NWO as a group. I think that would make some sense. I don't know if it would necessarily make sense out in San Francisco. Um, one of these years, you would hope the fabulous Freebirds would get their time in the Hall of Fame. So uh, I haven't really thought a lot about the Hall of Fame class. And, you know, after they've announced that they're going to induct Savage, I'm pretty much cool with whatever they do after that, frankly. I saw somebody the other day post that um, they would like to see Connor the Crusher get inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. And I say, why not? I think that would be a really cool thing. I think that would be a really awesome thing, and I think that's something that they should do. I think they should induct Conor the Crusher into the WWE Hall of Fame. Why not? Why the fuck not? You know, it's it's something, obviously, he was a big wrestling fan before he passed away. It would be a way to increase awareness about a disease. It would be a way to, um, you know, really generate some goodwill and do something good for a family that probably needs it. So... I'd be all on board with them putting Connor the Crusher in the 2015 WWE Hall of Fame class. I really, truly would. And if anybody poons on that, then shame on you. Shame on you. Let's see what else here. Uh, Dexter C73, which wrestler is the most deserving of being in the Hall of Fame? That's already in? I don't know if you can sit there and say just one. For those that are not in... I mean, man, you've got a lot of different names. You've got Luthez. You've got Owen Hart. You know, you've got a lot of names throughout history over the years of professional wrestling that could deserve to be in the WWE Hall of Fame. So I'm not sure 
uh, which side of the scope you were going on. Uh, and then he also asked, if Savage were alive, would he object to being inducted by Hogan? That's the $64,000 question, isn't it? I think, if I had to guess, and this is just me strictly guessing, and I do not pretend to speak for the Macho Man, so I do not know. I think at the end of the day, Savage would have understood the importance of the moment and understood that it kind of resent, resent, represented, excuse me, uh, things coming full circle and him coming home in a lot of ways. As a result, do I think he would have objected to being inducted by Hogan at the end of the day? Probably not. For those that are wondering why Lanny Poffo wouldn't induct him, it would be because Lanny Poffo is there to speak on his behalf. He's there to accept. And if that make, that's a difference, that makes sense. So um, I don't think he would have objected to Hogan inducting him. I really, truly don't. Or maybe I would just truly like to believe that. That, that might be what I would say. Uh, Sam Bergwan also wants to know, Do you think who do you think will win the Royal Rumble? Uh, based off of what I saw on Raw on Monday, I have no fucking clue. Some might suggest Roman Reigns. I almost wonder if they're going to go down the Randy Orton path. I don't think it'll be Daniel Bryan. Well, certainly doesn't seem like it. They didn't build any momentum for any damn buddy to win that Rumble. It's like WWE knew they were in a quandary with this year's Rumble. They didn't even do anything to try to attempt to fix it. They gave nobody momentum. Like, even if you want Daniel Bryan to win, you'll admit, he's got no fucking momentum whatsoever. They have him lose to Bray Wyatt, and they're fucking sending Kane at him. That's no way for him to build any momentum at all. Uh, Ahmed416, what do you think about the four offensive linemen formation against the Ravens that the Patriots ran? Was it unfair? No. If it was allowed by the rules, how was it unfair? Maybe the Ravens should stop bitching about that and worry about the fact that they gave up two 14-point leads in that game. It's just a thought. You know, when you lose, a lot of times you find out the real character of individuals and teams based off of how they handle the losses. And Harbaugh sitting there and bitching about you know, the formations that they ran and whether or not they were legal or not. I understand the Patriots have a tendency to want to uh, uh, toe the line when it comes to the rules and sometimes go over it. Um, but in this case, you know, if the receiver declared or the lineman declared as eligible and the running back and wide receiver declared himself as ineligible, which they clearly did, then that's on the Ravens. Shame on them. Stop bitching about it because it's your own goddamn fault. Uh, let me see what else we got here. Got time for a couple more. Uh, Yule Bryan, do you think that the Austin versus Brett match would have been even better with the title involved? If you're talking about WrestleMania 13, no. Why would you need to mess up perfection? Mm -mm. I, don't, I don't think you needed to. Uh, Real Ziggy 23 what are your thoughts on Rey Mysterio? Somebody that should mean more than he does. Somebody that should have more respect than he does. Somebody that the WWE maybe should have treated a little bit better than they do. That's kind of the way I look at him. Um, it's Johnny Russo. What got you and the other guys to start with the YouTube videos, and how has making videos positively impacted your life? Uh, I get to interact with a lot of cool people. You knuckleheads, the intelligent ones, all in between, all cool people. I enjoy doing this. It gives me a, a little bit of sense of purpose just in the sense that I've got a voice and I have something to do sometimes. That helps me break the boredom sometimes. Uh, what got us starting was my one friend Jarrell was doing a wrestling podcast, Pile Driven Respect, and he was good, but his other cohorts were stupid, idiot morons. And I'm sitting there talking with Tony, and we were listening for a while, and we're like, man, we could do this, and we could do it a whole lot better, and they fucking could. And then we kind of explored what we were going to do. Didn't even know about the YWC, about you, people on YouTube doing wrestling videos. Had no clue about it. And and we became part of it. And, and it's somewhat, somewhat important part of it, I suppose. Just one of many, obviously. Uh, but that would be it. Um, so, you know, yeah, it's been it's been a good thing. It's been a, been a good experience. You know, it's, it's done a lot for me, I have to say. And I've enjoyed doing these videos the past four plus years for all of you. And I hope you've enjoyed them as well. Uh, so anyway, cut out the sentimental bullshit. Thanks to all you guys that submitted your questions for this Q&A episode. There will be another Q&A coming up Wednesday. Stay tuned for more content all week long leading up to the 2015 Royal Rumble. Whoopee! Here on OTRS Central.